Uh, hello, this is Dave. Uh, we just now finished a video on uh, the effects of card removal and blockers, and we're going to continue that theme as we discuss the three betting range. Now, we've been working with this game, and we continue with our 2 5 full ring model. We have uh, 100 big blind effective stacks, uh, which are $500. Uh, the first player opens for $20 with the 100 hand range. Now, before we go on, I want to mention that this 100 hand range that we're using here is strictly for sample purposes. This is not intended to be a realistic range for anyone. Okay, the only time this particular range would be applicable would be if you were in early position in a full ring game and it was a relatively loose pass game that allowed for open limping. Okay. In such games where uh, it's not uncommon to go to the flop with two or three limpers and there are plenty of players who will often uh, call a raise, you know, so if it's raised it could still go to the flop three four-handed. In those types of games, you usually will have a limping range and your opening range will then be smaller, okay? Uh, if it's a more aggressive game where limping is rare, uh, several people calling a raise is rare, then you're not to have a limping range, and even from early position in a full ring game, you'd be opening up more like 11%, uh, maybe 12%, and whereas this is only about a 7 to 7.5% 7 range. Uh, in the future, I will do a video that shows how to size your range, how to come up with the size of your range. That was not the purpose of this. This is to show range balance. Everything we've done before, I wanted to illustrate some concepts of game theory, so what I was primarily looking at is range balance and showing you how to, range, to balance your range between value bets and bluffs so that you'll be able to come in with more hands yet be unexploitable. Okay, that's what we've, we've designed right here. We have a 100 hand range. We come in for 20 and when he 3 bets us, he's going to need us to fold um, a very large portion of the time, 69% of the time, for him to make an automatic profit with our bluffs. This forces us to defend against a 3-bet at least 31% of the time. We've constructed a range where we're actually going to be defending 34% of the time. We have 100 hands total, and our value portion of our range is the three big pocket pairs, which are 18 hands, uh, plus ace-king, ace-king suited which is another 16 hands, which makes 34 hands, or 34% of our total range. Right now, we're going to be looking at a 3-betting range. The 3-betting range, uh, when the 3-better comes in for $60, he has to look at the possibility of being rebuffed, uh, where the 4-better comes for 2 and a half times. For this reason, the optimal balance for the 3-better is going to be 40% value 60% bluffs. He has to have at least 40% value. I'm not going through the math again. Uh, you'll have to refer back to previous videos if you don't understand that. We're going to go right ahead forward and show the construction of this range. Now what we're going to do when we construct it is we're going to use the concepts of car removal and blockers. We see what the value portion of the original Razor's range is. It has lots of aces, kings, uh, big hands. When we attack this, we're going to make it such that the portion of his range that he thinks he's defending will not constitute the same uh, percentage that he thinks it is. He thinks he's going to be defending 34% of the time. If we attack him with the correct blockers, we may make it such that the very hands he intends to defend with constitute less than the 31% uh, required defenses. Now, I'm going to use another piece of software right now. I'm cheating just a little bit. We would like to be doing this strictly by math, but I'm going to use a computer program to help me. And this is called uh, Carpenter's EV. It used to be Stocks EV. Uh, Stocks was acquired or merged with Card Runners. But anyway, I'll go ahead and start to set this up. What we're going to set up right now is a game. We're going to say that. The two players are the under the gun. We're going to say the original razor is under the gun, and that the other player is in the cutoff. Now we're setting this up so that the players have 
100 big blind stacks, which would be $500. Here we see stacks are $500. And we're setting this up, the game properties, so that the small blind is $2, the big blind is $5. Uh, we have a 10% rake that's capped at $5. Or it's really said we're capped at $4, but you tip the dealer a dollar. So we want to make this realistic, so we're taking that money out of the pot. Okay, now, if we're going to say it's on the first player under the gun, he's going to open. We're going to say he's opening for $20. Okay, now, we refer back here, and this was the range we're using right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that range right here. Okay, we said that the value portion of the range was going to be pocket queens are better and ace king. We're also going to include ace queen. We have ace jack suited. Now, we had only two combinations of pocket jacks, so I'll put that in separately because we're only going to be raising with pocket jacks uh, one third of the time. But we have the suited connectors and one gaps starting with uh, queen jack and queen ten suited and they were extending all the way down to seven six suited and eight six suited and I'm looking over I believe this is our total range yes and we were leaving other other decent hands like pocket sevens, eights, nines, tens, ace ten suited, king jack suited we're leaving all these hands uh, to open limp with since they were decent hands that we don't want to be forced to fold to a raise. Okay? These are all decent hands. If you're in a more aggressive game where there is no open limping, uh, then you would have to choose between either folding or coming in for a raise with those hands as well. Okay. Now, here I'm going to put in our pocket jacks separately. And the reason for that is because I have to add a condition to the pocket jacks that we're only raising with those one-third of the time. And what we we're going to do is uh, raise if the pocket jacks were the same color. Okay, now it goes over to the cutoff. The cutoff is going to be three betting us, and he's going to be three betting to $60. Now, before I put in his range right here, I'm going to put in our defense range where we're going to 4-bet. And we said that a standard 4-bet is going to be 2.5 times the 3-bet. So we're going to 4-bet to $150. And the range was going to be the value portion of our range, which we intended to be 34%. That's pocket queens are better and ace king. Now, when we do that, the cutoff, we're going to say he's going to shove all in with his value portion. Because, and the reason for that is because we've made a bet up to 30% effective stacks when we made it 150. So he's in a shove or fold situation. And we're going to make this just the value portion of his range. Pop the queen's better or an ace-king. And we, of course, are going to call with our value hands. Pocket queens are better, or ace king. So, right now we have the whole pre flop tree fixed. except for the three betting range. Okay. Now, what I'm going to show here first of all, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a dry run on this, is that we intended to call at least 31% of the time. Otherwise, the three better would make a profit by 